Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. So for those that follow the Backyard Horse Enthusiast, I typically create content that's about equine horses. But today I'd like to share my journey on how I got my channel monetized on YouTube. I want to include the do's and don'ts that I've learned along the way. There's many. <laughs> if you are an aspiring YouTuber or you've been struggling to grow your channel, I think this video might be for you. Okay, let me begin by saying I'm not a young YouTube creator. Okay, I'm 61 years old. I have wrinkles. I'm a bit overweight. Um, I'm slower when it comes to learning new things, but don't let any of that stop you, okay? I started my channel with a huge amount of excitement. I was just so on top of being creative and I was videoing everything and editing and uploading and that was about three years ago when I thought my life was a certain thing. And then it wasn't, it abruptly changed and my life became a real challenge. So I didn't upload any content for about a year and a half. And I, I just, I could not seem to find any motivation to do it. Every time I thought about it, I wanted to cry because I had been through so much in a year, so much changed. I went from having a farm to living in 400 square feet. Um, I still had to finish school to get my certification. Um, it was different. It was sad. My channel was pretty much dormant and I was thinking like, who would even want to watch my videos now? You know, like there's been such a lag time. I had about 78 subscribers and really felt like it was going to go nowhere. And I contemplated deleting the channel, just get rid of it, erase it from my memory because a lot of those videos involves a significant other who's no longer in my life. But then something really amazing happened. I ended up uploading a short video of my horse, Dakota, interacting with his horse friend, Minta. Super simple, it was adorable, and I wanted to share it with everyone. Very spontaneous moment, but guess what? It got thousands of views. And then I had my light bulb moment. Just keep videoing. Video everything. And I, I realized in that moment that I had to continue to create and upload and treat it like, kind of like, and you've heard this before from other content creators, it's kind of like throwing pasta at the wall, right? You just keep creating, uploading, and then see what sticks, right? What gets the traction? So here's my do's and don'ts. What you need to do is create consistently. You won't get better if you're waiting for the best idea to come up and don't just video everything. Once I saw the potential in doing this, I knew that I had to be consistent. So I went back to taping interviews with fellow equine enthusiasts, and I started sharing more about my experiences with horses, which is vast. I started riding when I was four, and I'm 61 now. So I have a lot of equine experience. And then I had to optimize with tools. So I started using vidIQ to optimize my channel content. So I had to learn about keywords, titles, descriptions, and trust me, they mean something. I cannot recommend vidIQ enough because it literally, I go into that platform and I it 
looks at every single video and it, it scores my title, it scores my description, it scores my thumbnail. And speaking of thumbnails, one thing I did learn from another content creator is make sure when you upload your thumbnail that you use a good descriptive title for that thumbnail because the algorithm is looking at that too. So you can't just have it say thumbnail for video three. You, you're not going to get views that way. You really want to optimize everything. That's key. So before you upload the thumbnail, make sure you rename it with the right keywords. Okay. Same with your title description. When you're uploading a video to YouTube, make sure that that video description file description is the correct title okay really important vidIQ was ser a serious game changer for me and every day I am looking I'm analyzing my own content I'm seeing what people are watching how many views I'm getting if I'm not getting a lot why and I'll go back into vid IQ and start okay let me change that title let me tweak this let me tweak that okay so get it you'll be happy I think I pay like it's less than 20 bucks a month but trust me it's the best 20 bucks you'll spend truly what do I use for editing I use we video I I and veed v-e-e-d Veed is fun if you want to incorporate a lot of artificial intelligence too, or, you know, optimize that. Um, it's fun. I don't use it for my main editing. I use Wee Video. I have tried others. Um, Power Director 365 is another great software platform for editing. I found it a little more challenging for my old brain to use. So I went back to Wee Video to do just about all of my my editing. Um, I do video on my on my phone too. When I want to upload, you know, quick shorts, I use Shotcut. It's an app for your Apple phone or Android works on both. It's fun. And um, they also incorporate some AI. So like to generate a title and to generate a description based on what you feed it for information and then automatically uploads it to YouTube and you tell it where it needs to go or TikTok or Instagram or whatever. So the other uh, do is make sure you're engaging with your audience. So I, every day, I make sure to respond to all comments so that I'm engaging with my viewers. I heart comments. Um, and it's funny because even last night, someone commented on a video that had very few views that I uploaded three years ago. And I got a comment just last night. So the algorithms are working finally. But I went in and I tweaked everything in back of house of each video. And there's almost 300 videos, but I made sure I did that. And I used vidIQ to optimize every single video. And the other thing you want to do is don't be afraid to experiment with your content. If you look at my videos, there's everything from baking bread to, you know, cleaning my barn to um, opening a box from ThreadUp with my new thrift finds. Like, you know, you don't know. I mean, people are from all different walks of life. There are billions of us walking this planet. So, you know, again, throw the pasta at the wall, see what sticks. Oh yeah, I've got everything from interviews to how-to videos. I keep them simple, everyday moments with Dakota, like whatever. I always have cameras on me. And if I don't, I have my phone and a tripod for it or a selfie stick. Now the don'ts. Try not to get discouraged. You're not going to see instant results. That seldom happens, okay? But if I had stopped based on not getting the results I thought I should be getting, I wouldn't be here right now telling you that I have almost 6,000 subscribers, hundreds of thousands of views, and I'm making 
money. I am monetized and I have paid sponsors. So the sky is the limit. It's all up to you. And listen, I am a certified Gestalt practitioner and a certified neuro-linguistic programmer. So what I also find helpful is know what your typology or temperament is. And that's how you can create and uh, you, you're creating based on your typology. Okay. And that's a Myers and Briggs typology. So I have a test, 75 questions. If you are curious about what your temperament typology is, put a comment below. And I'll also put my email address in there and I'll send it to you and I'll score it. Okay. And you will learn about your typology and that's helpful because that's how you engage with the rest of the world. And I find it very helpful when I do my courses online, I have inner child healing groups, um, accountability groups, master classes. I want to know who I'm working with because everyone learns and sees the world and interacts with the world differently based on their typology, okay? All right. All right, the other, the biggie, and I look at this at least once a day. Never ignore the analytics, okay? You need to pay attention to what's working and what isn't. So again, use, use tools like vidIQ to see which videos are doing well and then scrutinize them and figure out why. The other thing is try not to overthink because sometimes, and boy, don't I know this, the simplest videos seem to perform the best. My most popular video right now is my horse Dakota getting a bath. It's kind of ASMR-y, you know what I mean? Like there's some great sound effects in there and it's a great visual and he's just such a funny horse, but that got, has so far, it's only been up for two months. It's gotten almost 200,000 views. All right. And honestly, after that, um, that video, I just really got more consistent and I got really good about optimizing my content what I'm uploading, making sure I'm engaging and I'm learning as I go guys. Cause you just, you never know what's going to resonate with your audience. So I really want to thank you for being here. I want to tell you, don't give up, have fun. All right. It can't be a chore. If it's a chore and it's not fun, it's not worth doing. Okay. I have fun with this. I love learning. Do I pull my hair out at times? Oh, heck yeah. Who wouldn't, right? Especially, the, I keep saying this old brain. I know 61 is not ancient, but, you know, it's not young either. <laughs> but again, you, you never know what's going to resonate with your audience. And on that note, I want to thank all of you for being here. And if you found this helpful, I'm going to ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. I can't wait to see where this journey takes all of us. And hey, check out my latest videos here. And don't forget to subscribe for more equine adventure. La, 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 la. See what happens? Like this isn't perfect. That's okay. But by subscribing and get hitting the notification bell, you'll know when I have more videos uploaded, which is honestly almost daily. And I work a, a, a job. Um, I do, I, I have a cleaning business, so I'm cleaning homes. I care for a 94 year old oversee. I don't care. I like, she, she's pretty self-sufficient. Um, and what else do I do? Duh. I do this and I am a certified Gestalt practitioner. So I am coaching. And then I share barn responsibilities with the other boarders where Dakota is. And I have a dog and I paddle board and I mountain bike and I road bike and I'm, I'm pretty busy, but I can still manage to upload consistently and uh, have fun with it. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. 
I wish you well on your journey of content creation. Oh, and another tip, again, Sean Cannell. Three years ago, I did, I did his 1,000 subscriber YouTube challenge. It was five days in a row that we met live and did a, a webinar, which was so helpful. I did buy his book. It's on Amazon. It's Sean Cannell, C-A-N-N-E-L-L. -L. And I did attend his YouTube Content Creators Academy. He has Think Media as well. He's got multiple channels. Um, he's brilliant. He's kind. Um, I found his... Um, I find everything that, that he shares really valuable. Um, I only wish that I had three years ago, even with all of my challenges, remain consistent in my creating. And if I had, I'd probably be speaking to you right now and saying I have 100,000 subscribers, but it's really about the viewers now, the viewing hours. So get out there, create, get monetized and have fun and I'll see you around. Thanks so much. Bye.